All right, everybody. Um, so you can take a look at the screen. Does everyone have like a view of the screen? So you guys should all have a Ziploc bag. And inside your Ziploc bag, you will have a piece of felt with a needle on there. Be careful, the needle is sharp. You will have a pair of scissors. Some will look like this and some will look very fancy or some will look um, small and gold. So just a pair of scissors. Also in your kit, you should have two caribou tufts. One is like a pink red color and the other it will be a green color. And then you will have sinew. This sinew divides up into five strands. So how you're going to divide the five strands is that you're going to use your fingers. You're gonna flatten it up. And then you are going to just divide up the sinew. So we need one strand for now. We're gonna start with one strand. And you should also have a piece of sticky black fleece, uh, velvet. So this part, when you take it off, it is sticky. Please do not take the white part off yet. Um, so you guys can get like a dollar rama um, picture frame or a picture frame that you can show your artwork in. You also should have a garbage bag. This garbage bag is super important because when you take caribou tuft, the fur gets everywhere. So what you're gonna do is open up the garbage bag. And then you're gonna place it in front of you. You're gonna put the bag right in front of you so it can catch the caribou fur. Oh, uh, you guys should also have my business card. It has my information in here. It has a link tree, my logo and my website, which is a work in progress. So the first step you're going to do when you grab your bag, I'm gonna wait for a few seconds. Is that you guys are going to grab your needle, take it out of the felt, thread the needle, so you're gonna thread it, You are going to use one long strand of thread. So what I mean by that is that you're not gonna make this a loop. You're going to tie a huge knot on one side of the thread. And how you tie a knot is that you hold your needle in one hand. You put the thread on top of the needle. It's gonna be like an X or a plus. You're gonna hold it lightly. And then you're going to wrap it around like a helicopter blade around four to five times. And then you're going to hold it very lightly in one hand. And then you're going to pull. And there you have a knot. I'm going to show you guys once more how to tie the knot. <laughs> um, actually, can I get a hands up? Who has the string divided? Perfect. We're going to wait a few more minutes uh, for the string to be divided. So I'm going to cut this off because I want to show you guys how to make the knot again, but do not cut off your knot. All right. I'm showing you guys how to tie the knot again. Um, you can also do it however you know how. It just has to be a thick knot at the end so it doesn't go through the velvet. So hold your needle in one hand. Put your thread on top of the needle. Hold it very lightly in one hand. Then you're going to wrap the thread around your needle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One for good luck. You're going to hold it in the other hand very lightly so then the thread doesn't come apart. And then you're going to pull the needle while holding on to the thread. 
and there's a knot. So this knot is a nice trick to learn. If you're having trouble with that knot, I'm gonna show you another way. So you can wrap it around your finger. One, two, three. You're gonna take it off your finger. Take it off your finger and put the thread through the loop. I don't normally do this type of knot. I find it much more harder, much difficulter for me personally. And then you're just gonna pull and there's a knot. So now we're going to visualize, we're gonna think about where you want your flower to be. So I want my flower to be in the center. So I'm gonna put my needle up through the back. So the knot will be on the back over on the other side, on the white side. So the needle is right here. It's in the center because that's where I want my center of my flower to be. Yep, yeah. And then the second part, hands up, sorry, hands up who has your, who has it up? Who has the line up? Okay, good job guys. The second part is great. So you're gonna put your needle down very closely to where your first needle came up. So let me show you, let me lighten this. So you can see you my thread, it's almost at a point at the bottom. And you guys are gonna have the loop. Make sure to keep the loop. You guys should have a loop. Here comes the fun part. You're going to grab your first color. I'm gonna have my center as green. Grab your first color that you wanna put on your center of your flower. You're going to need your scissors. So you guys are going to try experiment with the amount of fur that you gather. Remember, we're aiming for progress and not perfection. So I'm going to grab about a centimeter or two of fur. I'm going to twist it around my hand. I'm going to put the other fur not touching the one that I want cut and do not let go. So you guys are gonna keep pinching. So you're gonna cut as close to the skin as possible, but don't cut the skin. So you see it was really close to the skin, but I didn't cut it off. You guys are gonna hold and pinch the fur. And then you're going to put the thread, put it through the loop. And then you guys are going to have the thread in the middle of the fur. So we're gonna start doing that part first. So the easy thing about tufting is that if you didn't grab enough fur, or if you think you grabbed too much fur, you can just cut it at the back. So you guys are gonna pull tight. Pull your string tight. You're going to put it to the back. And this is how I like to tie my knots. So remember it's being pulled taut, really taut, not so tight that you break and rip through the velvet, but you're pulling. And then this is what I do. And you just tie a knot. So what I do is I go through the velvet. So you see my needle is going through the velvet. You're going to grab your thread. You're not going to grab the thread that's attached to the bottom where the hole is. You're going to grab the other thread. You're going to wrap it around one, two, three, and then you're going to pull. And that is my way of tying a knot. I'm gonna show you guys once more. Um, and then just to confirm what you guys are going to do, is that you're going to like lightly, very lightly touch your fur, kind of pulling it very lightly to make sure it doesn't come apart. If it comes apart, you have to start over. So what you guys do is you're gonna tie a knot, have your knot, pull, 
there's your knot. You're going to put it through the back. The knot should be touching the white part. And then you're going to put the thread at the exact same spot, put it through. You're going to have a loop. You're going to grab your center color, find a little section, divide it in, divide it. So you see, I'm you pull, pinching it in one hand, pinching the fur in one hand, and then I'm going to cut the fur from the skin, just the fur. And again, there's many ways to do tufting. This is just the way I was taught. So you're gonna cut the fur close to the skin as possible. You're going to put the fur, I'm still holding it as you can see, I'm still holding this. And then you're going to pull the thread until it folds in half. Do you see what I did? What it, what happened is that it folded in half. I flip it over. I put my needle through the felt. Again, this is just the way I was taught how. You're going to hold the thread in one hand, wrap it around one, two, three, and then you are going to pull the thread and the knot is right at the bottom, you're going to cut it off. No, sorry, not cut the knot off. Just cut like an uh, inch or two away. And there you have a tuft. And then we're gonna move on to the next step. This is the fun part now. You should have one tuft right here and I will show you guys how to knot it again. What you guys are gonna do is fold the caribou fur using your thumb in half. And now you're gonna grab your pair of scissors, become hairdressers and cut around your thumb. And then you're just going to put the fur aside and you can see it's not even yet. So you're gonna flip it, turn it around. You're gonna put your thumb down again and trim. And the closer you trim to the knot, to the center, the smaller your tuft will be. And then I don't like it still, so I'm gonna flip it again, fold it in half and trim around my thumb. And then I'm gonna do that once more. So I go around a total of four times and then I'm going to just flick this into the bag to get the little caribou furs off. I'm going to look at my tuft and then I'm going to trim around where I want it more round. So there you have it. So I'm gonna show you once more. Guys, can you please make sure your bags are open and not just flat onto the table so the fur goes inside the bag. So once again, I'm folding and cutting. all right um students so you will not necessarily get all the fur off the velvet yet. Um, after you're done your project, I will give you tape. It's just so that you can clear it off so you can see where you place stuff. All right. And so 
Hands up, who here is done the center? All right. Majority of us are done. So I'm gonna show you how to do the second part and then I'm gonna go around the room once again. So, you guys are once again going to tie a big knot. You're going to hold on one hand. You're gonna make a plus with the thread. You're going to hold it on one hand. You're going to wrap it around the needle. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see it is wrapped around the needle, the thread. You're gonna hold on one side and then you're going to pull the needle, holding the knot still, holding the thread. And there you have a knot. To make the flower, you guys are going to have to have the knot. And remember, it's one big line. It is not a loop. The thread is one big line. You're going to think about where you, how big you want the tuft to be. So I want my petals to be pretty thick. So I'm gonna find the center of where I want my petal to be. I'm going to put the needle through. Yes. So you see the thread on the back is cut off. And so you're gonna put your thread through the, the velvet. Then you're going to go down at the same spot or very nearby. Oh. And you're going to have a loop, which I just made mine disappear. So one moment, there you go. And so this is another tip that I learned is that make sure that the knot on the back always stays flush against the back. So the knot should not be like this. It should be all the way touching the back. You're gonna flip it over. Your needle should stay on the thread, please. You're going to grab your petal color, which I'm gonna use red. I'm gonna use more fur because I want my petals to be really thick. I'm going to keep holding it in one hand. I am going to now cut the fur very near the, the, the skin. So I'm still pinching it. I'm going to put the fur through the loop. I'm still holding it because that's the way I like to deal with this. And then I am going to pull until it's, it's folded in half. And then I'm going to flip this over, still pulling really tightly on this thread. And then I'm going to put the needle through the felt and make sure your thread is, your needle is threaded. Mine came undone. You're going to pull the thread that is, you're not gonna use the tail. You're gonna pull the thread, wrap it around one, two, three. You're going to pull the needle up and through, kind of tug it, cut the thread off about an inch or two. And then you'll see your petal and you're going to do the same thing, but be very careful about your center that you don't trim it. So you're going to fold the petal in half and then cut around your thumb once more. And I want a pretty thick petal. So I'm getting, getting um, around it. And then there's my petal. So instead of having like a round petal, I want an oblong shaped. So I'm going to make a moon shape following my thumb. And being very careful not to cut my, my center. And then I'm gonna flip it up, open and trim around.
So for your second petal, I'm going to show you how to do the second petal. And once you guys got this down, you can start making as many petals as you want. Ideally, you should have at least a minimum of four. So once again, I'm like, it's in the center where I want it. I'm going to pull up. The knot is at the back. And then you're going to go down where you have a loop. I'm going to grab my fur. I'm going to grab the same amount of fur as I did the last time. Holding it, cutting the bottom. Then I'm pulling, pulling, pulling. And I'm pulling on one hand, so it's really tight. And then you're pulling and I'm pinching and it's still tight, putting the needle up through the felt, wrapping it around and pulling. And then you would cut it. Okay, guys, so I have my caribou tuft. I'm gonna get rid of this one because I only want to have one caribou fur. And all you do is snip the back and it'll come apart. And the great thing about caribou fur is that you only need a little to make it super nice. And so I'm gonna restart on this petal too because I'm not fond of it. But once again, you just hold it down on one side and if you're making a teardrop shape, you're going to make a shape of a, a moon. And thank you guys for your patience. This shouldn't take more than 15 minutes because I will be rushing. <laughs> and um, I believe this will be cut shorter as well. at the end. So a tip I have for you guys is that I actually use nose hair trimmers for my caribou tufts. If I'm making shapes, I use the nose hair trimmers. I love it. It's fantastic. It's fast. And you can make really intricate shapes with the nose hair trimmers, I find. And you know what, instead of taking this metal part apart, I am gonna just add more green. So I'm gonna see where I want this. I'm gonna put it up and then I'm gonna put it down. And I'm going to use, this is another fun fact and a little tip that I didn't share with you, all, you guys yet is that um, when I'm putting it down, I put the thicker part towards the center, the center of the flower. So I'm going to flip it, just going down. Going to fold it in half. And I like to fold and pinch just to get it tight. I wrap my thread around my needle and still pulling tight, then I cut two inches off. And then once again, I'm gonna cut around. And caribou tufting is great to do in the spring, in the summer, when it's nice out, when you have like really great weather, windy weather so that the fur does not stick to you. I do not recommend using black pants while you're caribou tufting.
Why not? Um, because the fur will stick to you and you can see the black fur right on your black pen. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys might be able to hear Ruby. She's uh, our tech support. She is a great seven-year-old. Whoa, that mm -hmm. looks pretty good. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, sure, I can do it. <laughs> so I'm on video camera right now. <laughs> yes, it's very messy. We had about 30 students uh, plus their teachers in here learning how to tuft. And so I was pitter pattering all around the classroom, the library, and it was so much fun just seeing these youth um, learning how to do something new. Wait. A few of the youth really took, a, uh, took to it. They loved it. And they, I gave them some extra caribou fur um, and some extra kits that I had lying about. Because you know what? I don't need the kits. I can make my own fur again. But these youth, they might not necessarily have the funds to buy caribou tufting fur yet. Um, and so I just always want to make sure that the people in my classes can go home and continue on the projects. There also were a few youth who did not take to this. And you know what, that's fine. We can't all um, want to work with our hands, but we can definitely appreciate now why people price caribou tufting the way they do. And the reason why I wanted them to start with a flower is just because it's so classy, so classic. Everybody basically has flowers everywhere they are. Um, I know Nunavut has beautiful purple saxifrage and fireweed, and it's just stunning. And Labrador, I saw online because it's winter here um, that Labrador has gorgeous uh, land as well. And once again, be careful not to cut your center or the other flower tufts. But if you do, it's no problem. Just cut it off if you're not happy with it and start again. I'm just gonna twist that a little bit so it looks great like that way. So I use artificial sinew and with my artificial sinew, I do make sure to stretch it. And I see there's a question. Um, yes, I do sell caribou fur that's already uh, colored and I do ship it. It is a Canada Post tracked shipping because um, I don't want anyone to lose their fur. So you can take a look at, at my website or Instagram and Facebook. Website is once again, not working um, at this moment. Hoping to get it up and running by the end of this month, which was a goal for Haley's Handicrafts. And yeah. And once again, thank you for your patience. Um, and I'll, I'll, as well as I just wanted to let everyone know that I try and do support indigenous um, artists um, who do the caribou fur, because I do know that there are quite a few people who do sell caribou fur, but they are not indigenous. And so when I make my um, artwork, when I make my artwork, I always like to claim, and it's true, that it's all indigenous made. Because that is something that I want my clients to be comfortable and know about me, is that um, I basically, always support Indigenous artists. I will uh, put down my Instagram and website very soon, as soon as I'm done this. Oh, perfect. 
Jennifer is typing in my uh, Instagram. My website will be haleyshandicrafts.com. It is on my business card, um, which I did provide for the students and the youth. So I really hope they do send me the pictures of their finished, completed artwork. So when I learned caribou tufting, I was about 25, 26, and I was teaching um, the students and I asked them how old they were. They were about 11, 11 to 18 years of age. And I am shocked, well, not shocked, because I know youth have such talent and potential, but I was shocked at how young they were because I was like, they could really, really go on to learn and make, create great, fascinating things, fascinating pieces, sorry. And once again, caribou tufting is incredibly messy. I'm just getting fur all over my hands. If you have any questions about Haley's Handicrafts or Inspire Nunavut, I am more than willing to talk about it, especially since we are almost done. So I absolutely love my job, Inspire Nunavut. It's absolutely fantastic. It's great with the, for the youth. Uh, we do cater to everyone of all ages. Um, but online it's, it says 18 to 35. Um, but once again, we're super flexible. So if you do want to join and you're not in that age range, just send an application, we'll contact you and we'll make sure that we could help. Cause we just want people in rural remote communities to succeed. And I just got inspired. I'm probably going to be making Christmas tree tufted earrings. I'm really excited about that. It's gonna look so pretty. Maybe put some beads on there. So I've been watching the plays that the youth from Labrador have been putting on. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely amazing. It is just, they're writing, they're acting. I hope everyone's been able to see them. It's just phenomenal. I really wish we had something like this in Nunavut. And you know what? Maybe I'm inspired enough to create my own festival in Nunavut. Because why not? Because I think the youth in my... Uh, territory would really, really benefit and enjoy this so much. So I'm just tidying this up. I'm gonna grab some tape. Usually I use packing tape, but all I have is the scotch tape, but this will work out. So I have it sticky on one side and just taking the little bits of fur off. I wish you guys could see the color of this. Um, the camera's not showing the true color, probably because we're on a yellow table.
but I will be posting this on my Instagram. And once again, a helpful tip to use is nose hair trimmers. And I like my stork scissors, but I also use cuticle scissors for, because they're curved for caribou tufting. They just create the perfect circle. So I noticed that I have a fur there. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my scissors and just trim off the bits that I'm not liking. Then I'm gonna clean it up again with tape. And I kind of want uh, no leaves because I'm really digging how this looks. And that is right, I'm showing my age by saying digging. <laughs> I just want them pointy as possible. And the reason I twist the fur is because I can feel how much fur I grab and I want them all to be somewhat the same width, volume, look, shape. Okay, you can do that half. Again, the masking tape would be really great. It's nice and thick and powerful. Um, the scotch tape, great for wrapping paper. Uh, not much great for anything else. But it is doing its job, but it's just taking longer. And there you have it. A little tufted star flower, uh, starfish. Wow, <laughs> Haley, you did good. Thank you, Ruby. <laughs> Thanks everyone and thanks to Haley and um, Small Economy Works and the Labrador Creative Arts Festival. And um, oh, we do have one more comment question. Thank you so much, so interesting, thank you. And we will be posting this. I will be uh, editing it to get rid of kind of the long stretches of dead time <laughs> when uh, the class was being helped out, but uh, I'm posting it on our website and also sharing it. And feel free to reach out to Haley or any of us and um, hope to see you again at another one of our, um, one of our virtual events or in person, so. Um, Please keep in touch. Thank you so much. Thanks, Haley.